Hello everybody and welcome to the first round match between Gdynik and Wolfbark. Wolfbark is the undead team who's won the toss and chose to receive. Um, and he's just got an extra reroll there, hasn't he? Um, Wolfbark has a, an overall win rating of 63% in Champs Ladder. However, he did start playing in Champs Ladder. Um, so, you know, he'll never kind of have as good a win percentage as he should have. Um, he is 82% with Undead. Um, getting a three dice there with the mummy. Very good. Mighty blow. Got to like that. Um, and he qualified through the Goblin League. Um, G'day Nick has a win rate of 70% in Champs Ladder. And he qualified through the Iron Phoenix BBL. So, um, yeah, you know, like they're, they're both good coaches, both good racers. Uh, looking at G'day Nick, he's got the absolute standard standard thing of tree man, uh, tackle, strip, leader, and he's gone for block and a catcher. And he's gone for the exact same build as me, actually, with the two rerolls as well. So exact same team build as what I went with. Um, Wolfbark, I quite like Wolfbark's build. He's gone for a tackler, which you kind of need, don't you, against a lot of teams. A mobile guard, a wrestle ghoul, so it's, you know, something against uh, blodgers and what have you. And um, a block ghoul. So, like, you know, basically, whenever you're making a starting undead team, has to sacrifice. This is why I didn't like undead as a choice so much because early on that, that was nice wasn't it pushing the mummy into the tree gotta, gotta like that um, early on the undead just want skills on everybody and early on they can't have it I would even be tempted to skip the doubles you know obviously the, the obvious choice of doubles is block on the on the mummies this is quite quite aggressive from the from the buddies here, but not enough. And he couldn't get enough to put more pressure on Goody. I mean, the undead's screened off here. This guy isn't really putting pressure on because he's just going to cage here. Maybe a bit of an overcommitment there with these three guys. You know, the commitments could be back there. But he's got the movement to reposition. It's not it's not the end of the world, is it? Um, yeah, but you know, in the later rounds, if they've got block on all all three on all three, on all four ghouls, block or wrestle, and they've got more guard, and they've got, maybe it's a mighty blow on their tackle, you know, guard on ghouls, guard on zom mummies, they can be really good with the extra skills, they, they really can, I mean, you get five more skills potentially, so you can imagine how much better this undead team is with five skills, whereas I think maybe wood elves and humans don't gain as much from the extra skills. And same with Dark Elves. Dark Elves gain a lot more from the extra skills. Whereas Wood Elves are at the strongest comparatively at the first game where they just have the, the, the strip and the tackle and the leader is, you know, that's all they really need. It's uh, super, super powerful early. But I mean, they're still good later. It's just not as exciting for them, I think. Um, but, you know, look, look I went... I went 11-0-1 with Wood Elves in qualifiers, that's why I chose them. I'm kind of second-guessing my decision a bit now, but... <sighs> They're a good team. They really are a good team. I think maybe this format's in the best for them. That was a harsh reroll, wasn't it? Because not only did it cost them a reroll, I mean, it was unlucky, very unlucky 1-81 in to fail, but it was a bit of a crap direction to push, because even if, you'd only, if you hadn't knocked him over, he would still be giving up a mighty blow hit. But very unlucky to one in eighty one and have a guy removed. Yeah, I'm, the, the more I'm thinking about it, the less I'm liking what else is a choice because while it's still you know really good game one, they do it feels like they're going to drop off a bit, and maybe teams like Undead and Lizards are going to get more value as the tournament goes on from like the skill stacking. Um, but we'll see, you know, it's early days yet. It's early days yet, so there's no need to overthink it or panic or anything. <laughs> but you know, all I, I was thinking of, you know, some of the some of the second round matches are undead versus humans. And already it looks like a pretty tough match for the humans, you know. I, I really wasn't confident with humans, although humans were the most picked race in the World Cup, fifteen. 15 out of 64 people chose humans and only 12 chose wood elves 
And then there were some crazy things, like only four chosen dead, only four lizard men, and only three dark elves. So, you know, dark elves ridiculously underrepresented, but also undead and lizards overall. And yeah, still, lizards are still super strong. And in this format, if they can avoid wood elves and get to a block show hand skin, they're pretty happy. And then you know they can play. They can play. There's a lot of play involved. Much is made of how unwinnable the uh, the wood elf lizard game is for lizards, but it's it's really a lot closer than than it than it is on than, than the stats say. <laughs> I think I think between like two good coaches, it's a lot closer than the stats say. Early route there. Trees have been pretty bad so far. There, there have <laughs> was there was one particular game where the tree was amazing, but for the most part they've been they've been very poor. So yeah, already the undead are a little bit congested here, aren't they? He doesn't have two guards, so he can't he can't uh, keep guard on both cage corners, so he has to give up a one dice on the ball, like a relatively easy one dice on the ball. A leap for a one dice on the ball is uh, is pretty easy, isn't it? Now, of course, if he goes for the, the leap here, I mean, he could. This is the thing, you know, this is the thing for what else. You're always thinking about the ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> that means getting the ball, not anything else. So, you know, he's, he's still got quite a decent screen here. I don't like leaving the gap here. A lot of people do this to tempt people to leave the, to, you know, to kind of squeeze past. I don't really like giving them the space. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I don't particularly agree with that. Blitzing the unprotected ghoul is a fine choice. I mean, there could have been a leap in, one dice, and push him, um, push him to there, but obviously unlikely to get good scatter from that. So, I wouldn't have gone for the leap that turn. But you know, it, that doesn't mean to say that going for the leaf that turn is wrong, is it? I, I, I think it was bad. Other people could think it was good, and it's just a judgment call at the end of the day with, with elves when to go for it. He still got quite a good. Yeah, I, I feel like this this guy to here would have been better because he's protecting him anyway with having block rather than this guy being unprotected. And I don't know. I just don't like. I don't like the idea of. Um, of letting him get around the back, the back side. Obviously, he would have, you know, the bludge would have been knocked over there if he'd been blitzed. But um, the good thing is, it tempered the guard out. So now he's got a one dice from any direction should he choose to go for it. The tackle is on all three catches as well, which it wouldn't have been had he been there. But then maybe the blitz from here. But you know, I, I don't know. I, I I I wouldn't call it a mistake, but I didn't really like the uh, catcher being there. But here, you've got to think this turn, do you go for the sack? And um, it's interesting, isn't it? Let's pause it. Let's pause it for a second. So he's got the strip, he's got the strip here. So we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's not really feasible to leap from that way. He could blitz. He could blitz from the front, or he could blitz from the side, or he could blitz from the back. Obviously, the, the most obvious way is to leap in from the front because if it comes out the back, you can get away and score. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's worth sacking from any other direction. He is he has got three guys based with tackle, one guy based without. He could maybe, you know, dodge this guy around to here, blitz there and make a strong screen. So it is turn five. And the undead are quite far forward, so maybe he thinks it's worth giving up the like you know the usual standard conservative defense. But this is an interesting decision, isn't it? And uh, it's definitely not wrong. I don't think it's wrong to play safe, and I don't think it's wrong to go for the sack either. This is just entirely judgment call. Um, get in, it goes for it. Three plus to leap, and three plus to get the ball, and he gets it. Now there were a number of bad scatters here, but either of these could turn into a good scatter. So, you know, he did get a good scatter, and now he's basically 75% within the game, basically. And um, he fails the pickup. 
and now, you know, Wolfpark Steer is, is still in a tricky spot. He's got basically all of his... Now Aloy can make a lot of blocks. He's also got basically his entire team based up, hasn't he? So it's tricky to clear and keep safe for next turn. Gets the power there. I know he had tackle, but still. Still gets the knockdown and the removal. Absolutely massive getting the strip removal there. That makes him hanging onto the ball a lot easier. Maybe he would have gone for the surf. Um, no, he couldn't because he'd fall back. Out of, I think I would have maybe tried to surf the the strip guy. He does go for surfing the tackler. And maybe he couldn't have surfed them both. Um, Wolfbug, uh, Gdanek chooses not to use dodge, which is fair enough, isn't it? Don't really want to get surfed. But then maybe he's, nah, he couldn't use it. Once he's lost the first answer, he couldn't get the other one surfed. If if uh, if this dancer was just prone, he could have chosen to not use it to, you know, require the man commitment to surf him. But, you know, Wolfbark has definitely managed to, uh, he had good dice this turn, for sure. A stun, a KO, and a, and a knockdown. Um, knocked everyone down, then he had a knockdown. Knocked down him as well, so he's managed, I mean, it was, it was well played, but also he got the the, the dice enough didn't need to uh, make it a, a safe cage and particularly safe seeing as there's no strip ball dancer anymore um, he doesn't go for the, the I, I think I would have gone for the leap block there that is a defenseless school so it would have been a 4 plus I you know it's there's no great recovery but I feel like maybe this is the Maybe this is a little bit of a mistake by uh, by Gdanik. It's maybe being a bit harsh, but he's defending the conventional def He's defending. He's abandoned the conventional defense there. Now maybe it was worth a three plus leap in for a three plus a four plus to get the ball. And who knows what's happened? Maybe maybe, maybe that was a slight mistake there from Gdanik. Um, overall, though, I think I think both key, both players throughout the whole match in fact I have seen this match before I think um, I did cast it live Twitch <laughs> um, but you know watching it live I thought I thought both players pretty much played played uh, you know pretty much mistake free it's just just decisions that maybe could be different you know like when to go for the sack but maybe you should have gone for that sack there. looking back may maybe that was a bit of a mistake by Gaday Nick but the onus is on the uh, the non wood elf player to per play perfectly. I think that's in a way it's what I don't like about wood elves because the game pretty much always comes down to key dice rolls when when they're involved. Now, of course, removals are always key no matter which race you play, and whether it's elves versus elves or elves versus bash. The game will will come down to some key roles, and wow, that was it. That was an inspired um, blitz, and obviously using the reroll because he had two left, and to both dancers removed is uh, pretty pretty crap <laughs> for the woodies. But if they get them back, they've got two KO rolls. Get them back, they can take it over time, or maybe score early and turn over the undead. It's it's certainly always an option. So like yeah, so Wood Elves on in on one hand, there's it's always going to come down to key dice rolls, but on the other hand, you're always going to have the chance to make those uh, key dice rolls, aren't you? So I don't know. I'm just it always feels a bit a bit more lucky than than any other races. I think Wood Elves because you know Armor Seven can it's not so hard to get a bunch of. AV breaks like this, and to lose a lot of players. Now, of course, that's why I hated dwarves for this format because dwarves can also just randomly get their armor broken, and then they've got no comeback. You know, whereas at least elves, if they get a ton of players removed, they can actually do something with lots of movement and agility. So, that one of the dancers is back; the other one is critical. This is second half drive looking a bit bad with nine players missing a dancer, but with ten without a dancer it's absolutely fine. You've basically got to expect ten 
10 players max for the second half is what else. The hardest part in these games is the dead time when they're setting up their defenses, and he is, you know, he's got the chance of the one turn as well. He's got, he's got, ten, he's got nine players. There is the chance of the one turn here. So he goes for the uh, Tremon block onto the mummy, and then a follow. And then that gives you the Dance of Blitz into here, which gets him one square forward. And then you just block him again. It, it, he hasn't got that many players to do it, but he does have enough. My kick is actually quite nice. And of course he's got the thrower to, to use th throw. <laughs> no, pass, is it? whatever the skill's called. <laughs> Probably pass. Really wanted the power there to make it two dice, didn't he? The power's pretty essential with this plan working to make this a two dice blitz. I'm not sure he should have taken him out. I'm not sure if that, that stopped him or not. Because that means he's now got a GFI twice instead of passing it. Um, and obviously passing it is a lot better than GFI twice. But... Having two dice to try and find a push is is also really hard. So he would have pushed him to here, and he would have had... And he would have still had two players to move around. So yeah, he, he would have had enough players still. So it was okay to do move, move that guy, I guess. I guess the hardest part was getting the pushes, but... It did stop his, uh, did stop his throw being able to pass. And the KO comes back. So, we've got it, we've still got a game. 10 v 11, not even bad. And you know, it was, it was a it was a fine RTS setup from Wolfbark, and it was a fine attempt to score. So this has been uh, been pretty high quality before. Not you know a lot of a lot of the games people have made minor mistakes um, or even major mistakes. I don't think this was really a uh, a game where you could say anyone really made a mistake, to be honest. doesn't set up a three dice block here on the LOSR. I don't like that. I, I always like to set up the, the three dicer from the tree um, without having to move somebody. But then he gets the quick snap. And then he goes for the interesting play here of moving the tree forward to blitz the mummy. I would have even maybe liked to just blitz the, um, the guard, you know, mobile guard is a pretty nice player to blitz, isn't it? More likely to hurt him. Three, more likely to knock him down with three dice and armor eight. So, blocking without block. That is the thing, isn't it? With with up with the uh, L's blocking without block. Uh, it's what I hated about my cat, my block catcher. I really got the block catcher with taking guard on him in mind and maybe he's having a wrestle. A wrestle lineman would have been a lot better I think in retrospect. So yeah, only two dice, doesn't get the knockdown. I do kind of feel that maybe blitzing the guard would have been better. You end up facing two players instead of facing none and three dice to knock him over. But you know, it's it's not a mistake to blitz the mummy, is it? Certainly not. Just, just difference of opinion.
obviously carrying on the strip dancer. I, I like to carry on the strip dancer because you know you've got movement eight, strength three, blodge. You can leap. He's just the best ball carrier, isn't it? It does kind of suck that you take a war dancer out of the fight, but you've got to protect your dancers anyway. You know you'd obviously be blitzing with the uh, mighty blow. Well, the tackle guy. After round one, the mighty blow tackle. I was just thinking about my, my might, what what skill to take in the second round, and I was, I was thinking, you know, if he's getting mighty blow tackle hits on all these ghouls, looks a lot better for the wood elves, doesn't it? Rather than just having a random guard. So yeah, I'm, I am very much regretting my block catcher, but you know, it is what it is. I can't criticise. I can't criticise Gdanek for taking the block catcher because I did it as well. <laughs> I think that's what my point is when I'm when I'm keep thinking about my team. It is because he chose the same team builder, and you know now that I've seen people who've taken the wrestle, the wrestle line. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's really, it's really pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> I like that he has these two catchers and both dancers opposite side of the tackle. Maybe. Wolfbark should have blitzed with a block ghoul rather than a tackle to not commit him anywhere. But now he got the blitz. The one cut the one dodge player in range with tackle. Um, so you know he got he got some value out of it, but now he's very far away from the elves, isn't he? Now is definitely a good time for Gade Nick to move away from the tackle, I think. But then, then Wolfbark's choice of the Wrestle Ghoul comes into play. I think I would have been tempted to let, leave him lying down there. Um, he obviously gets lucky with making it and the GFI, which which does cause some problems. But, you know, there was a good chance of him failing that dodge and then taking an armor break. He, I don't think standing up was a good idea because he'd give the tree a block to base them away. He's squeezing himself against the sideline a little bit here, but I think it is worth it to get away from the tackler. And then he can then he can manoeuvre around and stall around it, this area if he, if he gets the chance. Non follow there was in case he broke armour, wasn't it? He'd rather be further forward. There's, if he follows. The uh, zombie just stands up and bases him. If he doesn't start, if he doesn't follow, the zombie moves one square and bases him. Whereas this way, if he gets the AV break, he's closer to having an effect on the play. This, this dead body's actually doing a job, isn't it? Making it a bit harder for the uh, tackler to get back. Jams in the guard. And goes for the goes for the hit on the dancer. I think the more normal play would be to hit the catcher. And, you know, get more in the way. But this certainly wasn't wrong, was it? I think Alder maybe has got... I, I, like, I like stopping the back back move a little bit. But this is quite an easy quite easy to screen off at, at the back here now. Safe moves first. And then an absolutely massive double one in the stun. You know if if he makes that blitzes the ghoul he screened him off and the tackler is struggling to catch. You can dodge all these guys out. And, um, you know, who knows, you could have st stalled for a couple more turns. Now. Wow. 
Big big reroll there, but bad time draw all one in twenty seven, just trying to free up the ghoul. And this is quite a nice chain push to get the wrestle in. So he could have he could have one dice and gone for a surf afterwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double GFI. He could he could have one dice, then double GFI for a serve. Um, I think he made the right decision in not doing that, but he doesn't have a reroll for the hit now, does he? Um, and he's only got a wrestle. So, but that puts him in in a spot where he can't really stall because if he goes in the end zone, he scores. So he just has to, you know, he couldn't he couldn't run around and stall the other side. So. Pretty unlucky actually for Gdanik, forced into scoring because of the one in 36. Now of course, Wolfbark did base them and everything, so you know it's not. Uh, it wasn't an unforced one, is it? Still one, th but it's still a huge one in 36 because he could have got at least another couple of turns of stall out of that. And of course, it's a lot harder to score in two or three than it is to score in four. But four turns with two rerolls. Um, he certainly got a good chance as Wolfbark. And similarly, Gdanik can use can use has has to defend for three turns, but has a reroll for each of those turns. So anything can still happen. Of course you, you've got to be prepared both sides to use all of your rerolls to like <laughs> to, you know, to either get to overtime in Kadamik's case, or to to win in normal time to avoid overtime in Wolfpack's case. I think I don't think there's any point conserving for overtime here. I mean, it depends depends how low low odds Wolfpack's score is, but you know what I mean. You don't want to leave value left. Leave value off the pitch, basically. You don't want to think. Oh, I've, got, I've, got, I've saved a couple of rerolls for overtime, but I didn't score. And if I'd scored, I would have won. <laughs> so, oh, I've saved two rerolls for overtime, but he scored, and now there's no overtime. So, yeah. The kill is actually good for overtime, isn't it? Um, if it comes to that, because it gives him another player. Now he's starting to take some damage, his uh, Gdanek here. Down to eight players. You can. I mean, the thing is, this is quite a good formation from Wolfbark here. So that even if he got the pal there, and even if he palled this zombie, he could have only got four players through here, and that's not enough to really put pressure on. So I'm, I'm not sure about the commitment to hit them in there. Especially as the mummies are moving three and he could have just run away. Maybe screen. Not out of maybe not out of maybe blitz the tackle again. guy. Um. But you know he's he's got a scoring threat. It's not it's not wrong to do it to do it this way, but you know, and he is he has kind of split the team a bit, hasn't he? These four guys pretty out of it. But he's moving seven so he can get back. And he can get back a bit, so I don't know, I feel I feel he could have played it better that turn, Gdanik, but it certainly wasn't bad. Based cage here is uh, is not the best, but he can solve it with a pow here. Three dice. Doesn't get it. Very, uh, very not what he wanted. I mean, <laughs> it was like it was touching. He had to blitz the he had to blitz the stripper there. As much as it stuck him on the tree, he had this. He had to blitz the stripper. Didn't get the AV break. He could have blocked him from the other direction and not got stuck on the tree. Um, but yeah, this is this is a leap in. Push him this way, and maybe a recovery. I don't like moving this first. I would have kept him back for the recovery. Oh, yeah, he had to have the assist. Ah, 
Oh, I don't know then. Oh, okay, so now, I think maybe Zard, what I would have done, would have gone 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 GFI. Um, and then recover with that other dancer. But he doesn't get the strip. And, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of unlucky, isn't it? It's 3 plus 3 plus to get the ball. And who knows what would have happened if he had. He did have a player behind to get it, but uh, I think I would have maybe hit, hit it forward, just because I thought the dancer had a good recovery. Um, but yeah, certainly can't criticise him for going the other way. I mean, this is the thing. They, they, they really both did play very well. There's... there's it's not. It's kind of almost beyond nitpicking to uh, criticise them because it is just literally. It's not even criticism. It's just there. There were. There are always different options, aren't there? Everything's risk versus reward. Some people would value moves differently, uh, or strategies differently, or tactics differently. Huge power here. Taking out the stripper. Absolutely huge. Because if he's just if he's just pushed. Sure, he's pushed to there. It gives the ghoul an extra square of movement because he'd have had to run round him if he was uh, if he was still stood up, even even stood up here. Um, but obviously now the strip is no threat, so now it's a four plus to get the ball to tackle. Uh, sorry, five plus to get the ball with tackle. So the three plus. So thirty three percent instead of sixty six percent is quite the difference. But he's still got the tackle hit. And fails the last 75% and knock the ball over. And that's probably GG, isn't it? And, uh, yep, rolls that, so it's just a two dice. I don't believe he can make it the three dice. So two dice with block, and then a score. Uh, uh, plus two dice with block, and if it was a both down, he could then still blitz with the ghoul as well. So, uh, it, was, it was a good win for Wolfbark. Um, you know, it's just it. The dice were fair, I think. I think you know the elves took some attrition. Ultimately, their sacks didn't work out. You know, and they they did use rerolls. They used a reroll on the leap. They used a reroll on the hit on the other one, and they used a reroll on the recovery on the other one. So, so at all stages, <laughs> they failed one of the leaps. They failed one of the hits, and they failed the recover. The one chance they get, they got the recovery. So, on another day, they could play exactly the same, and then. You know that one of those dice rolls work out and the Wood Elves win. So, um, you know, both sides played very well. Basically, no mistakes. Just, um, just things that could have gone another way. So, a bit, a bit unlucky for Gdanik to go out because you know he could have played, he could have played somebody who had made a mistake, and he could have just had a bit, bit. You know, a crucial, some crucial dice has gone his way. He could have won. So, uh, congrats to Wolfbark. Commiserations to Gdanik. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.